So this is the newest project that I've been wanting to share with all of you. My girlfriend and I recently bought this acreage that sits in the beautiful backwoods of Quebec. If you're new here, you might be wondering why we bought this property. Well, a little bit about myself. I'm a nature enthusiast that loves to film wildlife. Over the past five years, I've been mostly interested in birds, and as I started to learn more and more about them, I also started to develop an appreciation for the habitats they live in. And because of that, the goals with this new 13 hectare piece of land is to conserve and manage this area to benefit as much wildlife as possible. This is something I've been dreaming about doing since I was a little kid watching red foxes in the field behind my house. So I'm very excited to get started and give you a quick tour around the property and officially kick off this new project that I'm calling the Wildlife Homestead. I know the logical thing when starting a tour would be to give you the lay of the land, but I really want to start with our first days and a few wildlife sightings that I've had so far from right inside of the house. So when we arrived our first night here, we got in pretty late and most of our time went towards getting Sparrow set up in her new home. If you haven't watched my last video, Sparrow was a feral cat that we spent two months working with to eventually bring her back with us. It was surprising to see how well she handled the move, she mostly slept on the 6 hour car ride, and when she got in the house she just kept purring and sitting next to us. After a couple of days of us rearranging furniture, we let her out of this room to roam the entire house. The previous owners left a bird feeder up so I decided to put her cat tower right by the window so she could watch the birds. The interesting thing is, we have this female wild turkey that hangs out below the feeder. She goes around foraging and when she's done she heads into the cedar shrubs to rest. After watching her a bit it looks like she has an old foot or leg injury. She can still walk pretty well and she flies perfectly fine but I think she's just a little too slow to keep up with other turkeys. One morning I saw her foraging on the road and while Sparrow and I were watching her, an adult northern goshawk swooped down at the turkey four times and then flew into the nearby trees. I wasn't fast enough to film the encounter but I did get this phone footage of the goshawk perched in the trees. Honestly, this is some of my best camera work. Those three pixels are just crystal clear goshawk. The whole time this was happening, this chickadee was at the feeder like, don't move a muscle. The goshawk eventually flew away and the turkey just went back to foraging as if nothing happened. But it's looking like she'll be a regular at our feeders, so I'm thinking maybe we can find the name for her. There's also a group of rough grouse that hang out under our balcony and they come out every so often to feed on the buds from the apple trees. I've been calling them the grouse gang, we've counted about 8 of them so far and I'm sure we'll get more as the snow settles in. We also have a pair of Canada Jays that visit the feeders. One of the first things I need to do is set up more of these around the property to see what other species are living here. Speaking of the property, I think it's time to show you the area and some of the key features of the land. Since everything is covered in a foot of snow, I'll also add in some clips of when we visited the property earlier this fall. It's hard to beat the colors of autumn in eastern North America and we're kind of located in the middle of nowhere here. We're surrounded by thousands of acres of forest which is a great place to see the leaves change and of course to observe wildlife. The massive stretch of forest around us is pretty continuous which means that we do get some of the larger mammals passing through. According to the previous owner there's fox, coyote, deer, moose, bear and apparently lynx. Lynx are one of my favorite animals and I've yet to see one so they're definitely high up on my target species list. Since all of these larger animals have so much land to roam, the sightings could be few and far between, but as we diversify the habitat on the property, that should help increase the amount of wildlife passing through. I've already seen a decent amount of tracks along the gravel road that we have on the property. I'm really excited to have this road, it's crazy the amount of properties we visited that had all this land and absolutely no way to access it. But since we have a gravel road that goes from the front of the land all the way to the back, this means that we can easily access every part of the forest. There's also ditches on the side of the road that funnels the flowing water on the property and it also creates a nice opening through the trees which allows more light to enter the forest floor. Come the spring, I'm sure we'll start seeing some interesting plants growing in these areas that wouldn't otherwise grow under the thick canopy of the forest. Along this main road, we also have three hunting blinds and I'll need your ideas on what to do with these. They're too high up to film wildlife at eye level but I was thinking I can build a second story to the blind directly below the top portion. That way I can film wildlife at eye level, whether they're on the ground or up in the trees. I can also set up barred owl and sawwood owl nest boxes nearby so I can watch them from inside without disturbing them. But there's a lot of potential with these, so let me know if you have any ideas for them. As you continue past these blinds, the road weaves through the forest, which is a younger mixed forest with a few dense stands of conifers. I haven't had too much time to explore these forests yet, but that'll come in future videos. So far from just a few quick walks I've done, I've seen a great horned owl flying through the woods, and I also had a female pine grosbeak land right next to me. Not a bad start at all. 
As you continue through the forest, the path eventually leads to the first big feature I want to show you, which is very anticlimactic with all the snow, but underneath all of it is a pond. If you've seen my previous series, how fitting is it that we have a pond? This one is much larger and deeper than the one that I built. I think it's somewhere around 15 feet deep, but one of the goals in the spring will be to explore the pond, sample the water, and see how we can use it. Based off of what the previous owner told me, I do have a few initial ideas. He was saying how he's seen American mink, great blue herons, and a pair of hooded mergansers that show up every spring. So my first idea is to set up a hooded merganser nest box nearby to try to get them to nest at the pond. My second idea is since there's so many fish eating animals around, why not just stock this pond with minnows and other small fish, maybe even crayfish, and just see what species we can attract. This could be one of the better hotspots on the property, if you were a bird flying over, the pond definitely sticks out through the forest. So I'll need your ideas of what to do here and what you'd like to see at the pond. As we continue past the pond, there's this thinner patch of forest directly behind it. I was thinking this could be a great area to potentially build a wildflower meadow in the future. I'll need to take a better look in the spring, but there isn't many grasslands or fields of flowers around. So setting one up here could be a good way of diversifying the property and attracting more species. Behind this area, there's a small trail that branches off of the gravel road, and this leads to a fourth hunting blind that sits on top of a rock pile. I'm excited to sit in this one, it seems like such a peaceful area, but right behind this, the small trail then cuts through a planted pine forest, which leads you out to the front of the property. That's where our house and garage is, and they both look out onto a second pond. I can't believe we have two of them, they're both about the same size, but this one was stocked with brook trout. I was going to film outside, probably heard the wind. We're getting hit with a big windstorm right now, so I'm a lot safer and a lot more comfortable in here. Welcome to the Wildlife Homestead, everybody. This is something that's been in the works for two years. My girlfriend and I have been checking properties on and off, and we finally both decided on one. The past week here has been mostly uneventful. We've just been moving in our stuff and organizing all the things that the previous owners left. They left us absolutely everything, which for this property is a good thing because one, they were really organized, and two, the things they left were actually good. There's a lot of great tools that we can use on the land. We had visited some listings where a big selling point was like, we're gonna leave all of our stuff for you, so that should bump up the value. And you take a look around and you're like, I would honestly pay you more to get all this crap out of here. But for this property, it works out really well, because like I said, there's a lot of useful things. Like, look at this. Isn't this just the cutest bear mount you've ever seen? I think it's, uh, I think it's just wonderful. What do you mean it gives you nightmares? No, this bear, no. So I just wanted to come in here quickly and add a few words to this video. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who interacted and responded with my previous video. I think we're sitting right now at about 5 million views. It was overwhelming to read all the great comments and all the stories you shared. And there were so many generous people that donated or that joined the channel members that honestly, when something good like that happens, the only thing I can think of is to pay it forward. So I decided from here on out that I'll be donating a portion of the AdSense that I earn on this channel to two different charities, organizations, or initiatives every month. We can choose which ones we want down in the comments. You can let me know some of them, but I'd like one that helps people and one that helps nature. So for this first month, just by all of you watching during December, we were able to donate 15,000 meals to Feeding America. So hopefully some people in need get some good meals for the holidays. And for the one that helps nature, I decided to go with the Audubon Society. Did I? I don't know. I think we might be losing power. I decided to go with the Audubon Society since they work on a bunch of different bird conservation projects. So let me know some of your favorites in the comments and we can choose different ones every month. I'll also need your input of what you want to see here. There's so many possibilities, but for the first year, I won't go too crazy with big projects. I really want to survey the land, spend my time out there and figure out what's here, what's working and what's not. I'll set up a bunch of trail cameras and stuff too. So a lot of those videos are gonna come in January. So anyways, happy holidays. I'll see you in the new year. And once again, welcome to the Wildlife Homestead.